this at 12. Good morning San Antonio starts right now. Happy Easter weekend. A lot of people might have plans outside. I know lots of people at Brackenridge Park after the city lifted those curfews, Tiff. Mm -hmm. And we're expecting some nice weather, right, Sarah? That's exact. Well, I mean, it depends on what you feel like is nice. Okay. <laughs> if you're okay with a little humidity, yeah. yeah. But also, we're not going to have a rained out Easter weekend, which I think is what qualifies as nice weather for us. It is going to be humid, and there are some areas of mist already this morning out there, particularly on the north side of town, closer to the hill country. And you can see outside right now as we look with live cam, it is pretty muggy out there. You can see on the horizon the low ceilings of the clouds. Again, some patchy mist in many areas. Temperatures on the mild side. It is only 65 degrees in San Antonio. So a mild morning, 65 at Kelly and 64 at JBSA Randolph. As we take a look at your Easter weekend, we are going to see gradual clearing today. So that in the afternoon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature of 82. Tomorrow for Easter itself, I do think we're going to have a little bit more mist out there in the morning hours. Uh, so if you have early morning, plans for Easter with the kids outside, maybe a, a egg hunt before mass or before church service. We will have some areas of mist, but as for the afternoon, it is going to be just humid and breezy and warm. High temperature of 85. I'll walk you through an hour by hour forecast for your Easter Sunday coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. New this morning, a man says he got caught in the crossfire during a shooting on the city's southeast side. Now police are trying to figure out what happened and who's responsible. So their investigation started just before two this morning on Goliad Road, not far from I-37 and Loop 410. Police say a man told them he was walking down the street when people in two separate vehicles started shooting at each other. He says one of the bullets hit him in the back. Then he ran to a nearby mobile home park to call for help. Police say they searched the area but couldn't find a crime scene or any shell casings. Police are also investigating a drive by shooting on the west side. Officers say just after two this morning, a man was walking up to a home on Stone Fence Road. That's near Highway 151 and Loop 1604. That's when the man tells police someone drove by and bullets started flying. The man was hit once in the thigh. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. So far, police have no information on a potential suspect or suspects. And a man has died after someone shot him in Converse. It happened on Metal Hill, not far from Topper Wine in Loop 1604. Converse police say the man in his 20s was working on a parked car in the street when someone wearing a mask shot him several times and ran away. The victim was rushed to the hospital where he later died. Converse PD is still looking for the person who did this. And the truck driver in that deadly crash with a school bus in Bastrop County has been charged. According to Bastrop County court documents, Jerry Hernandez is charged with criminally negligent homicide. It comes one day after police say he admitted to using cocaine the morning of the crash and smoking marijuana the night before. Hernandez is accused of veering into the school bus lane that was carrying 44 pre-K students and 11 adults. They were returning from a field trip at the Bastrop Zoo. Two people died, including a five-year-old. A school district spokesperson says the school bus did not have seatbelts. And as some school districts announced that they're closing some campuses, it's a different story at East Central ISD. The district is expecting the student population to double in the next 10 years. That's according to a new demographic study presented to the school board this week. The district says having these studies is crucial in helping them understand where the growth will be in the district so they can plan accordingly. Currently, we have over 11,000 students uh, um, and some change. Um, and so um, just at the high school alone, we're a 6A high school. We have over 3,500 students at our high school. We only have one. Um, and then we have seven elementary schools currently. With the bond 2022 that passed, we are going to build uh, two elementaries and another middle school to help alleviate uh, the population growth. The study projects the area that covers the district will see 44,300 plus new homes by 2033. Southwest ISD is also seeing similar student enrollment and housing growth.
April 1st is on Monday and the Texas Organ Sharon Alliance is raising awareness all month long to get more people to become organ donors. So according to the Alliance, 10,000 people in Texas are waiting for an organ. Earlier this week, Daniela, Daniela Ibada spoke with expert panelists about the importance of organ donation, becoming a live donor, how donating works, and the benefits of it. This happening as April marks National Donate Life Month. This education is so important. Um, one thing that we also stress to people that if you do join the registry, it's great to have a conversation with your family about that. So that way it takes the burden of that decision off of them at the time that you do pass away. So your family knows exactly what it is that you would have wanted. On April 3rd, KSAT Community will host a phone bank to help people register. You can learn more about the phone bank and see the entire organ donation town hall on our website, ksat.com. Time now, 805, 65 degrees. A taste of New Orleans flavor right here in the Alamo City. A look at a food truck serving up Cajun Southern Bites. And a chance to get a new furry friend at a discount. Details on a pet adoption event happening today. How cute is that? <laughs> Welcome back. A lot of people will be spending their day outside this weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty humid weekend for us so hmm, but at least for the campers I know yeah. but at least it's not going to be very rainy at least there's not a risk for thunderstorms That's this good. weekend mm. just some morning mist we'll have some morning mist tomorrow and we've got some out there now too in some places okay. so the, it's a sure sign that the humidity has been rising outside you can see the lower cloud ceilings on the horizon there this camera is up pretty high in the atmosphere and so you look at temperatures and it's mild it's 65 in san antonio 63 in bolverde 67 in castroville 61 in bernie and 63 in comfort Visibility has also been reduced in some places, particularly up in the hill country and out west toward Castroville. Visibility down to four miles in Bernie. So kind of in that northern Bear County into Comal and Kendall County, that's where we've got some areas of patchy mist this morning. And as I'm showing you the satellite imagery here, you can actually start to see the sun rising on the horizon, but it's cloudy all the way from Dallas, Fort Worth down here to San Antonio and Laredo. We've got those low clouds mixed with the high clouds moving in. And so clouds are going to be stubborn today because the humidity is high, not too much to allow for those clouds to clear up at the moment until later on this afternoon. We've got that high pressure system off to our east that's directing their winds from the southeast and that's why we've seen the humidity steadily rise. We're getting that Gulf of Mexico humidity. So as you look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, some peaks of sunshine by lunch, 72 degrees, and in the afternoon it'll be 82 for the high. We're going to have breezy winds this afternoon from the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour and then a mild evening with temperatures still near 70 degrees by nine o'clock. High temperatures are going to be hotter further to the west. Del Rio, Eagle Pass, close to 90 degrees, 84 in Hondo, 83 in Pleasanton, low upper 70s rather for Gonzales and parts of the hill country around San Antonio. We will be in the low 80s, a bit warmer than seasonably average by about five degrees or so. So a warm and humid day that'll continue into tomorrow too for your Sunday Easter forecast, particularly uh, for Easter egg hunts and things like that. We're going to have some areas of mist in the morning, a lot more prominent than out there right now but again nothing like of stormy conditions or anything to uh, prevent you from being outside this is just going to be a little mist that could be annoying but nothing major and then as we head into the afternoon tomorrow it is going to turn breezy temperatures will be warming into the mid 80s by tomorrow afternoon the breeze will get in your way if you're planning on enjoying a picnic outdoors or anything like that uh, so make sure to have something to weigh down those paper plates and uh, paper napkins. Weather setup shows quiet weather across Texas other than those clouds and areas of mist. There is a big low pressure system off of the coast of California. This is a dynamic system. It's allowing for winter weather in parts of California, uh, Nevada into Utah. It's allowing for flooding being possible near Los Angeles and even fire danger for parts of Texas and New Mexico. What's that low pressure system going to do for us? Well, not much. It is, however, going to send a cold 
front our way. And so the by Wednesday, Thursday and Friday morning, our lows will be in the 40s. This is a look at morning lows, not high temperatures. So don't put those jackets away just yet. You'll want them in the mornings, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday morning. High temperatures, though, will rebound into the 70s. Hey, coming up again, the the countdown to the solar eclipse. We're in the single digits now. We're only nine days away. I would encourage people to be cautious of cloud forecasts this far out. Yes, there are some indications that we could have some morning clouds, but in order to get an hour by hour exactly right forecast, that's really only possible within a few days of the eclipse. So we will keep you posted and we want you to stay up to date with us. We're going to try to give you the most accurate forecast possible. I know there's some clickbait out there, social media posts trying to say we have hour by hour, but KSAT Weather Authority, they're the right. they're the ones I trust. So if you don't have that app, go ahead and download it. And Sarah Spivey and the team will keep you updated. And we'll talk more about the a path of totality coming up here in the next half hour. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Time now, 8:13, 65 degrees. Let's take a look at your lotto numbers. Your pick three. 825 Fireball 6, your daily 4, 0, 3, 5, 1, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 12, 16, 17, 21, 31, and Mega Millions. Unfortunately, somebody won that big old jackpot and it's only like 25 now. 11, 30, 33, 38, 60, Mega Ball 16, Mega Player 4. Good luck. Welcome back. If you're looking for a new pet, you could adopt one at a discount today. San Antonio Pets Live will have reduced adoption fees for dogs and puppies. Dogs and puppies can be adopted for $25 during the Petco Love Adoption event. It's happening from noon to 4 p.m. at Petco's Ingram location. Adopted pets will go home spayed or neutered and microchipped with all current vaccinations. They'll also get heartworm and flea preventatives. And take a look at some no. of the cute pets up for adoption. We have their pictures on KSAD.com as well as more information about this event. Puppy eyes. Oh, they'll get you every time. So precious. All right, it's 817 and 65 degrees. A local food truck is bringing some New Orleans cuisine to the area. SA Live's Jen Tobias Strutsky takes us there after the break. Welcome back. It's a food truck featuring the flavor of New Orleans with a name from a Led Zeppelin song. Black Dog Kitchen is serving up Cajun Southern Bites that will make your mouth water. And SA Live's Jen Tobias Stretsky gives us a, ta a taste. She even met the owner's black dog that inspired him. Take a look. Today we get a taste of the South here at Black Dog Kitchen where the owner is combining his love for his dog, his favorite band, and community. All right, I'll give you a hint on his favorite band. His dog's name is Zeppelin. And I'm here with Ben Harvey, the owner of Black Dog Kitchen. So excited to chat with you and to taste the food, of course. So let's talk about how you started. How I started, well, it's been a, a long time dream come true. Um, I, I lost a family member that left me a little gift and I just, you know, I've always thought that, you know, if luck equals opportunity plus skill, then this was my opportunity. Mm -hmm. So here I am and I've gotten pretty lucky so far. So oh, yeah. love it. Turning something maybe negative into something positive, Absolutely. right? To carry Absolutely. on. Absolutely, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And and the food, now you're talking southern. Uh, let's let's throw out some of the things on the menu. Uh, some collard greens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got, you know, grits, of course, our mm -hmm. muffaletta, black and catfish po' boy, fried mm -hmm. green tomatoes with the homemade pimento cheese, which was her recipe. Oh. So, you know, it's always coming back home. Yes. Okay. I love that. So what brought you to San Antonio? Uh, Post Katrina, mm -hmm. uh, had my dad was living here okay. and I knew I always wanted to come back home. So, okay. you know, here I am. And I, I loved it. The culture, um, the city itself, it was just, it was home. And I knew it was home. I met my wife here. My son was born Aww. here. So yeah. it's my home. Got it. Okay. And then you start, you said you started in restaurants in Mississippi. Right? I did. I started cooking when I was about 16 and okay. just have done a little bit of everything since. So okay. I just like doing it. I like the community aspect of it, being around people and seeing smiles on people's faces. So okay. that's what 
that's that's what makes me do it. Sounds like a perfect job. All right, and you got your dog. <laughs> and right I got here. my dog. Oh, He's always with that. me. Okay, well let's go ahead and um, shall we sample some of the menu items? Now? Absolutely, let's do it. Sounds good. So what are we starting with first, Ben? We're gonna start with the muffaletta. Okay. It's a New Orleans specialty sandwich. Oh my goodness. Look Comes this. served on a nine-inch round sesame bread mm. with ham, salami, and uh, olive relish. And I think our olive relish is what sets mine apart and makes it as authentic as it can be. Next we have our boudin balls Ooh. with our homemade comeback dressing and our homemade collard grains. Okay, of course. what are boudin balls boudin for those balls. who don't know? Boudin <laughs> balls are basically a, uh, it's a pork and rice blended sausage. Okay. So no beef um, and then we basically take them and deep fry them. Um, and they're delicious. I mean, deep fried, all of that. Anything and I'm sure deep this, fried. The spices, right? The seasoning, is that what helps make it have that pop of flavor? Absolutely. Okay, and then obviously we've got to have our greens. Our greens. Okay. Slow simmered for three to four hours. Delicious. Okay. And last, we've got our Ooh. take on the New Orleans barbecue shrimp mm -hmm. and our mock show, which is actually our Cajun cream corn. Okay. So there's bacon and Trinity. And then I've got a blend of seasonings for vegetables, and then we add a little heavy cream to it right there at the end. And our barbecue shrimp has become very popular very fast. Wow. It is a Worcestershire butter mix with another blend of seasonings that mm -hmm. we cook to order. Um, so it's a homemade sauce to order every time, and it's amazing. And that bread looks really good, too. The bread is that traditional. That makes a difference, right? Yes, absolutely. Got to right. have the real stuff. OK, here's a final look. One more time at the delicious food. We're keeping these flies away. Flies but yes, away. Again, it looks amazing. Thank you so much, Chef Ben. Now, again, I've never tried a boudin ball, so here we go. You're in for a treat. Okay. There we go. Tell us one more time what's in this. It's got pork and rice sausage, mm. then deep fried, and all kinds of seasonings. They're so flavorful and delicious. Thank you. Okay, and this is Zeppelin. We had to show you. We had to meet Zeppelin. <laughs> Who is your dog? He's a that's, wild one. That's on the truck. Thank you guys so much, Ben and Zeppelin, Thank you. for having me out for the delicious food. Again, a true taste of the South Cajun deliciousness. If you want to check them out, you can just follow them on their social media so you can keep up with the different locations, right, Ben? Because you travel different spots. Absolutely. All the time. Blackdogkitchen.net. I have a calendar on there at all times. All right. Thank you, Zeppelin, for the hospitality. You should. You're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> For more information, SALive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab or scan the QR code on your screen. I think he wants a walk now. I think he wants okay. a walk now. Okay. I teased him. What they didn't tell us is that Zeppelin is actually the mastermind behind all the recipes. Oh. You know? Yeah. That's why he, he had to take credit for the business. I love businesses <laughs> that are named after animals or their pets. It's great. So you'll find Black Dog Kitchen at the Witty Museum's first annual Bruiseology Beer Fest from 7 to 11 p.m. Then next weekend, April 6th through 8th, they'll be at Point Park off Birdie Stage Road for a pre-eclipse party. And on April 10th through the 14th, they will be at Shakespeare in the Park at La Villita. To watch the story again, just go to salive.com. Okay, Woody Museum today. It's 826 and 65 degrees. More than $1 billion worth of tax refunds are still available, but the deadline to claim the cash is fast approaching. Okay. The MPOX cases in the U.S. are on the rise as vaccination rates lag. The new threats on the horizon. Taking a look outside with live cam. It's 8.30, it's 65 degrees. It is muggy outside. And Sarah Spivey says we're looking at a muggy Easter weekend. She's going to break it all down for us in just a bit. Yeah, right now. What's oh, hey. hey, what's up? So we do have areas of mist out there this morning, and that mist is going to be prominent tomorrow morning, too, for Easter Sunday. But there's no major issues out there. You won't have to worry about thunderstorms. You won't have to worry about rainfall, really, in a big way for uh, any kind of Easter activities. Just know that it is going to be pretty muggy. Outside right now, look out there. You can see there are some areas of mist. It's 65 degrees. Winds from the 
south at about 10 miles per hour. We are just nine days away from the total solar eclipse Monday, April 8th, around 1.30 p.m. We're going to be seeing a path of a total solar eclipse pass through many areas of our viewing area from Eagle Pass all the way up to Texarkana through the Texas Hill Country. Only half of San Antonio is in the path of totality. It's really in the north side and the west side that will be in the path of totality. So make sure you make plans to be in the path of totality 1.30 p.m. next week, next Monday, April 8th. The thing is, we won't have a super accurate hour by hour cloud forecast until a few days before the eclipse. So keep up with us. We'll have your updates for you. As for today's forecast, gradually clearing after this morning mist, patchy fog and morning mist tomorrow for Easter morning. And then by the afternoon, though, tomorrow it'll just be humid and warm. I'll tell you how warm coming up in just a bit. Sarah Tiffany. Sarah, thank you. Now to some top stories we're following this morning. A hostage situation now over after tense hours. Dutch police say three people were held hostage inside a nightclub. Officers were able to get the people free earlier Saturday. Heavily armed police cordoned off the area around the club, saying that multiple people were being held hostage in a building there. Now officers say there appears to be no terrorist motive. Right now, engineers in Maryland are focused on removing the wreckage after part of the Francis Scott Key Bridge fell this week. Salvage crews will want to break the broken parts of the bridge into even smaller pieces to lift them out of the water. The tools needed for that are coming into place. They include seven floating cranes, 10 tugboats and nine barges. Clearing the river will allow officials to reopen the economically vital port of Baltimore. Meantime, crews also continue to search for those four remaining construction workers who were on the bridge. When it came crashing down, they are missing and presumed dead. Former President Donald Trump and other co-defendants are still trying to kick Fonnie Willis off the Georgia election interference case. Judge Scott McAfee previously ruled the Fulton County District Attorney could continue on the case, but only if her top prosecutor, Nathan Wade, resigned. Now that's because there were ethical questions surrounding their previous romantic relationship. Wade resigned after the decision, clearing the way for Willis to stay on top. Trump's and other defense attorneys are appealing the ruling. They want the entire Fulton County DA office disqualified from the case. U.S. taxpayers are leaving more than $1 billion on the table. The IRS says about 940,000 people in the U.S. haven't submitted tax returns for unclaimed refunds for the 2020 tax year. That breaks down to roughly $932 per, per refund. So California has the most refunds available, followed by Texas. Taxpayers usually have three years to file and claim the refunds or else the government, they keep the money. For those who need to file, the RS, IRS advises people to get their rel relevant forms from their employers or go to irs.gov. You have until March 17th to get those 2020 tax returns in. Now, Social Security recipients who were overpaid will now have to pay back much less than before. The government will no longer automatically withhold 100% of the overpayment amount from recipients' monthly benefits. Instead, it will take 10% or $10, whichever is greater, to get back the overpayment. Limited exceptions will include things like overpayments resulting from fraud. The change applies to new overpayments. Health officials are sounding an alarm. Cases of MPOX are rising in the U.S. Meanwhile, vaccinations to protect against the virus, they're lacking. And another subtype of MPOX is now a potential threat. CNN's Mandy Gaither has a look at the latest data and explains what those at high risk can do to protect themselves. In the U.S., MPOX vaccinations are low, but the number of cases is climbing. The CDC says there have been 511 reported this year through March 16th. That's about 70 percent higher than they were at this time last year. We're not even halfway through the, the year, so the concern is that 
those numbers may increase. Dr. Jared Fox with Orlando Health says anyone can get the disease, which is a less severe cousin of the eradicated smallpox virus, but men who have sex with men are at greater risk. It spreads through close contact. The numbers are still far below the tens of thousands of cases in 2022, but after a quieter year last year, experts say the U.S. is vulnerable for two reasons. The amount of federal resources available to manage the public health response has been cut, and the CDC says in most states, less than a quarter of the population at risk has been fully vaccinated with the two-dose series since it was authorized for emergency use in August 2022. It's highly effective um, at preventing um, disease and it's especially preventing complications associated with um, NPOX. In December, the CDC also warned about another subtype of this virus that's been found in Africa that spreads more easily and causes more severe disease than the one from the 2022 outbreak. We want to get the word out that um, if you're in the high risk um, populations that are um, have been most affected by the NPOX, that you um, get vaccinated. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. It's 37 and 65 degrees. And there's always plenty to do in the Alamo City. Some of the major events to add to your calendar still ahead. And we're counting down the days for the upcoming eclipse. Meantime, if you're thinking about heading to the hill country, you might want to start planning for it now, especially for parking. What you need to know after the break. Welcome back. Kerrville is said to experience one of the longest spans of time and totality, and that's why hundreds of people around the world will be flocking there. Some businesses in Kerrville have been preparing for over a year now, and as our Courtney Friedman shows us, in less than two weeks, they're ready to put their plans into action. You can feel the energy. Businesses preparing for thousands and thousands of people to descend on Kerrville to catch one of the best eclipse views in the country. I think the hotels are booked. I think people are ready. Brenda Bindock with Shriner Goods says they'll be fully staffed and open for all the business they can get. You'll be ready to go? We're ready, yes. We've got beautiful things to show people, so we hope they come in. Here at Divine Sports Bar, head chef Travion Jefferson is prepping for inventory. You know we have, we're going to have to order extra food and there's going to be a lot of people here. Jefferson even having to build right more storage. You're going to have to find more space. Yeah. This won't be enough. No, not at all. And the whole town is going all out. I even found this t-shirt at the bar saying total solar eclipse and it has the date on it. And you will see the exact same words on signs like this all over town. I think it's safe to say people are excited. Bindock will definitely be taking her lunch break that day. We have our glasses. <laughs> glasses ready. We yeah, are ready. to step yes. out during the eclipse. The big concern locals have for visitors is the parking. Lots like this one at the Tyvee Sports Complex have already pre-sold all of the spaces. This garage near the park is free. First come, first serve, but it'll fill up quickly. Still, Jefferson knows people will find a way to get there. They'll figure it out. And these businesses will be taking advantage. A boost in tourism this big, almost as rare as the eclipse itself. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And we have a list of some of the parking options available on KSAT.com. Just find this article or scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen to learn more. Parking, parking, parking will be very important. Of course, KSAT is your Eclipse Authority. Look for more stories coming up this week in our special live stream with all of us KSAT meteorologists. That is on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. I know it's a all, you know, everyone is going to be live at different locations. And we're all going to be paying very close attention to the forecast. Again, an accurate hour by hour cloud forecast for the eclipse will not really be available until a few days beforehand. Now we can get a gradual idea right now. It looks like we could potentially have some morning clouds, but whether or not those clouds will clear, we'll have to wait and see. Outside right now with your authority radar, it looks like there's nothing in that circled area there uh, along 281. But after doing some digging, I've determined that this is the area where most of the mist is occurring this morning. The mist is too fine for the radar out in New Braunfels to really pick up. But some areas that are dealing with the mist this morning include Bulverde, Timberwood Park, right along 281, close to that 1604 interchange there, even up into areas in Kendall and in Comal County, like Bergheim, Smithson Valley, Startsville Canyon Lake, all getting some of that very fine mist this morning. 
might have to turn on your windshield wipers once or twice if you're on the northeast side of town. But the big story today is that it'll be gradually clearing and it'll stay pretty humid today as well. Here's a look at the satellite and the temperatures. We've got those clouds. We've got a mixture of low level clouds and high level clouds out there. So because of the clouds are layered, it's going to be a bit difficult to shake those clouds today. We'll see peaks of sunshine though this afternoon. 65 in San Antonio, 63 in Bolverde, 61 in Bernie and 64 in Hondo. A wider view here. You can really see when we look at the 24 hour dew point change. If the mist wasn't enough, this verifies that we have seen an increase in the humidity. Dew points have increased some 5 to 15 degrees just within the last 24 hours. And it's going to stay muggy all weekend long. Dew points in that muggy range through today, even rising tomorrow. And so I do think that mist is going to be more prominent in the morning tomorrow for your Easter Sunday. Keep that in mind as you're planning your Easter egg hunts and things like that. You will have to deal with some areas of mist in the morning hours, but nothing in the way uh, like uh, thunderstorms or heavy rain or anything like that. As we take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast for the day today, 72 and still cloudy at noon. In the afternoon, we'll see peaks of sunshine, high temperature near 82 degrees this afternoon. It's going to be pretty mild tonight. We're only going to be near 70 degrees by by about nine o'clock. Even warmer out to the west areas like Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs today going to be close to 90 degrees around San Antonio, though low 80s are a good bet. 82 Nixon Smiley, 82 in Floresville, 83 Poteet and Pleasanton. It'll be in the upper 70s for Kerrville, Comfort, Bernie, Holotus and Bulverde and near 80 degrees for Seguin and New Braunfels. As for Easter morning, as I mentioned, I do think we're going to have a little bit more prominent mist in the early morning hours, but by the afternoon, Humid and warm and breezy too. Uh, that the breeze will definitely be noticeable. Here's Tiffany's favorite graphic, the big chocolate Easter bunny. There you go, Tiff. As we look at your Easter Sunday, we will have that patchy mist in the morning, still lingering through 10 o'clock through early masses and early church services. By noon, it's going to be uh, right around 72 in the afternoon, 85 for the high and breezy with south winds at 10 to 20 mi miles per hour. Those winds will pick up tonight too. If you got up to 30 miles per hour and then during the day a few gusts tomorrow of uh, 25 to even potentially in the evening 30 mile per hour wind gusts so a little breezy for your easter sunday with that morning mist then a front moves through on tuesday and that'll allow for chilly mornings don't put up those jackets just yet take a look at those morning lows in the 40s wednesday thursday and friday morning low humidity and comfortable in the afternoon but by next weekend, guys, humidity rolls back, and that's why we're at just a slight concern about some morning clouds by eclipse day on Monday. The KSET weather app is always just the, the best idea. Yeah, I yeah. think it is. When you guys um, were little and you opened up your Easter eggs, what yes. was the like, oh, yes, this candy, yes. Okay, I loved with all of my heart those like whoppers that were in the shape of Easter eggs. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm, about? Mm -hmm. Loved them. How about you, Tiff? I like to, I actually like sweets, so anything like sweets, not like, the chocolate. Like, I like, about, like, the, like the, the candy, candy. yeah. Candy. Mm -hmm. Jordan almonds. Oh, okay. Have you ever How had about them? you? No, if I got almonds and I was candy, like, what is this? <laughs> I always wanted. Because that's just me. I always wanted, I like, like the Reese's Cups. Those oh, are always yeah. a good one. Yeah. Those are good. I liked, um, well, one, I never got the cash. My, they always did, like, a $20 or $10. I never got the, oh. I never got the golden egg. The most, I, I don't know, what are you talking, cash? <laughs> Oh, my parents would do like one <laughs> golden egg and I never got it. My brothers would always get it before me. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sad about well, it. Well, look at you now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's 847 and 65 degrees. The San Antonio Spurs are hitting their stride and it's giving fans hope for next season. Yes, a big win. Go Spurs, go. So excited to talk about that when we come back. Uh, taking a look outside with Transguide. Hey, a lot of people are on the roads this morning because a lot of people are probably traveling, getting ready for Easter Sunday. Please stay safe out there. And I know a lot of people coming into the Alamo City will have all of your forecasts. And if anything happens out on the roads, we'll let you know about it. Go Spurs, go! The San Antonio Spurs back on a hot streak, winning their third game in a row. And they're hoping to keep the momentum going when they hit the court tomorrow. The team beat the New York Knicks 130 to 126 in overtime last night. Victor Wamiyama made a three-pointer to give San Antonio a four-point lead in OT, leading the Spurs to their first 
three game winning streak of the season. And Wemby had pretty good game all around with a 40 point career. That's a high for his career and added 20 rebounds and seven assists. He had the first 40 point 20 rebound game by a rookie since Sha Shaquille O'Neal back in 1993. The silver and black are back at it again tomorrow night hosting the Golden State Warriors. A wrestling legend is coming to the Alamo City. The Big Texas Comic Con announced Wrestling Hall of Famer Sting will be at the convention in October. Other big stars set make appearances, Elijah Wood and Sean Astin from The Lord of the Rings and Steve Burns from Blue's Clues. Steve! <laughs> Tickets, autograph sessions, and photo ops are on sale now. We have more information on KSAT.com. The Big Texas Comic Con will take place October 11th through the 13th at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. I went to this last year. The line for Sting was seriously so long. Okay, and coming up in April, the Tower of Americas will host its annual Wine Fest. I'm looking at my sister in wine, Sarah Spivey, right now. Attendees can sample wine from 24 different wineries from Sonoma County, California. The event also includes live music, hors d'oeuvres, lawn games, and prizes. The event is scheduled from 2 to 5 p.m. at the base of the tower on April 6th. The list of wineries taking part as well as ticket information, head to our website, ksat.com. And you can find these stories and so much more in our Things to Do section of ksat.com. Right now, we also have a list of Easter events, including lots of different egg hunts. Viva Fiesta! Now you can already purchase your tickets for the exclusive KSAT Fiesta Party for the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau Parades. We have a list to buy tickets on KSAT.com. You can also scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen. There it is. And you'll get prime seating to watch the parade. Two tacos. Not just one taco. You get two tacos. Everyone knows you need Two tacos, if not just one taco, and one drink and access to a cash bar. Then you need multiple hot sauces, of course. Now, there will be an easy to get to bathroom and a chance to meet some of us. <laughs> awesome. Very excited for that. It's 854, 65 degrees. We'll be right back. One person in Sin City on a win streak this week. Between Tuesday night and early Wednesday, a guest at Caesars Palace Okay, I don't know. One on three separate slot machines. The grand total, nearly $668,000, according to Caesars Entertainment. No word about the identity of this alleged very lucky person. Is it luck? Is it a fluke? It could be a fluke. This is the third time within a week that more than half a million dollars was won in jackpots at this Las Vegas property. You know, everyone's going to be flocking to Caesars now. So. Now, if you're feeling lucky, you have a shot at nearly a billion dollars. The Powerball jackpot now sits at 935 million. That equals an estimated cash value of about 452 million dollars. There has not been a winner since New Year's Day, so this weekend could be your lucky chance. The next drawing is tonight.